All right, here I have a Rav Bariach Loxis that Georgia Jim lent me, a uh, series of Loxies lent me. Um, and I think the key is a little bit tough because I think there's usually something, it's part of a double Euro, but it's been cut in half. I think there's usually like something here that stops the key from going too far. Um, so you gotta get it lined up just right. And uh, this uh, lock has five pin and pin um, driver pins and key pins in it. And um, I've encountered those before, but this one has two interactive pins. Um, interactive means that the uh, the key itself can lift pins. You can see that there, hopefully. It can lift pins above the as high as the key could go. Now, you can't just have bumps on the key because then it wouldn't be able to, to slide in. Um, so it has moving parts that are uh, enable it to slide under and then be lifted up to lift those pins higher than they normally would be able to go. Um, this uh, this one has a mix of serrated and spooled driver pins and I, I've i never uh, personally uh, had uh, serrated driver pins before on a pin and pin so this is a first for me. Uh, they're, they're not uncommon but I just never, I've never picked one before. So for this we'll go ahead and um, Put some tension on, and then I have this honest dong shi um, flag. Uh, these are really, really nice and strong. Um, not a lot of flex, and the handles are beautiful. Um, but you do need to do some work. I thinned this out with a Dremel and, and filed it down and whatnot, because um, out of the package they're too way too thick. They're as thick as the as this area is, and you can see how much I thinned it down towards the end. So to pick this, um, we'll go ahead and uh, get under the first pin here. And I can hear it, and I can still feel still feel it binding, and it goes up, 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 and now it seems loose. Second one, same deal, up, up, up. So those are serrated driver pins that I can feel there. We'll keep going back. Uh, third one seems loose. Fourth one, sneak under that. If you see me wiggling at this, I'm trying to get the flag underneath the the pin. And okay, so that one. Lift it up some, and in the in doing so, it dropped pin one. So lift pin one up, up, up. Uh, drop pin two as well. Lift that up, up, up. And I think that yeah, pin one dropped down again. And pin two, we dropped into a bit of a false set. Um, so let's see what we got. All right, pin three is now binding. There we got a click. So I got counter rotation on that one. That's got to be a spool. And Pin five is binding hard. Counter rotation. Click out of that. So that's got to be a spool. Check our one and two to see if anything dropped there. No. Three. Four. Five. Okay. So now maybe some of our inners are overset. So what I like to do is just turn it a little bit and give them a chance to drop down. So I'm turning the flag on just the warded area, not pushing on any pin to give me manual counter rotation. Um, all right, so now let's lift up pins. Uh, make sure pins one and two are not binding on anything. Doesn't seem like it. Pin three. No. Four feels really high. Um, I'm wondering if I overset four. And you can let go of tension because it's uh, there's nothing center biasing this and I have a feeling that like I can't feel four you know so when you go you hit pin one I have to go under it and then I go and then I go back I hit pin two hit pin three and pin four is missing so that tells me a pin four has been overset uh, and it's probably um, like a torpedo pin or something like that on the key pin that allows me to be in a false set. So I just fully reset. Um, it's very hard to recover from those. So let's go with this again. One, we'll go a little bit more carefully this time, but I know that one and two are high, high setting um, interactives from that last go around there. Four is hard to get underneath. So let's be careful with four. Okay, go back to one and two. One and two. Two, and then one might have dropped down from that again. One and two, three, and now we'll do four a little bit more. Another click out of four, one and two. Go back to four. 
So I'll make sure we're not oversetting four at all. There we go, dropped into our false set. One and two are set, so we know three is a spool. Counter rotation. Oops, sorry, slipped off of it. Come on, three is a counter rotation. There we go. And we remember five was a spool. I'm trying to get under five now. Counter rotation. Click, and we're back into the false set again. All right, so now it's probably enters because we're really deep in a false set. So, uh, number one. Number two, I felt like it's something going up there. Number three, I feel an enter there. Number four is sitting all the way on the ground. There we go, we're open. So <clears throat> we had a reset in there, which is fine, um, because uh, I was able to detect that number four, I, I couldn't find the key pin. So if the key pin is not dropping down by gravity, that's a, a very good indicator of false set. And to find it, you can't, a lot of times you can't feel the, the weight of it, especially with a, a, a flag. So what I did is I was having the flag up at an angle. Let's see if I can show this like this, and I'd, I'd ram into the pin. Then I'd go under it, lift up on that pin, and then ram into the next one. Right, so I'd ram into it, go under it, lift up, ram into the next one. And I did that to one, two, three, and then four, there was nothing to ram into, which showed me that it was probably overset. So we'll go ahead and lock this back up. There we go. Get our autofocus on. And drop this down. Oops. Bang the light. All right, so let's get this uh, clip off. Hopefully it's not as hard as that GG. Looks uh, like it was already it's rotating around on me. There's that clip, get a key. Ooh, don't want to pull that out. <laughs> Let's get ourselves a shim. Make sure. Now pin and pin, they can be they can be a challenge to uh, get a shim under. Just don't let that come out like that. There, there's two. Can be a real challenge with a shim. Three. And I find that I have to like go diagonal and then it'll go under four and the fifth one's not quite the fifth pin. There we go, five. Get a follower, push this out. I think there are passive pins on here so I want to catch the sides and the bottom of the plug, which I did there, put that up there. And there's some passive pins here, two passive pins on the left. There's number four. And number two. And these passive pins are interesting. They're uh, like they're the same on both sides, so they can be put in either, either way around. They're like bi-directional. All right, um, let's go ahead and dump these. Oh, I pull. All right, so five, four, three, two, one. I should have brought. So I'm still stuck. I think it's the interactives that are stuck. There we go. Yeah, the interactives must be because they poke up into the keyway or into the into the chamber. All right. So let's get uh, let's get those sorted out. Um, so okay. Remember I said four felt like it was overset on it like a torpedo. There. That's a got a thin lip torpedo. It looks like it's the only torpedo in the lock. Uh, there's those two. That can go up there. Hmm. Number one, number two doesn't want to come out. There we go. All right, got all, got all those. Let's get some driver pins out. Oh, got to get the shim out. One serrated. So we felt that on that interactive. Two serrated, we also felt that. We felt three as a spool, and it is. We felt four as a serrated, and it is. And we felt five as a spool, and it is. Oops, that went flying away. All right, so there's our pins. Just standard springs in there, nothing special. 
I'll leave that. So there's our pins. It's cool. So like I said, this is the first time I've uh, experienced um, serrated uh, driver pins in a pin and pin lock. So that's the Rav uh, bar Bariach. Rav Bariach. Um, Deloxus. Thanks everyone. Bye.